Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a Pomodoro timer. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a timer at the middle and three buttons, a start, a stop, and reset. If we click on the start, this is going to start the timer backward from 25 minutes. And when we click on the stop, this is going to stop the timer. We can start it again by clicking on the start. And also we can reset it by clicking on the reset button. And also we're going to have an alert when the timer is up. So the Pomodoro timer is useful for people who wants to study. After 25 minutes, they can have some rest. So this Pomodoro concept is for creating a timer for people who wants to work and focus on a job for 25 minutes. So in this project, we're going to firstly learn how to style it using CSS and also we're going to learn how to add event listener to the buttons using JavaScript and how to create a timer using set interval method of JavaScript. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. In this section, we're going to create the HTML parts of the project. And also I have put the final version here for our comparison. As you can see, we have the title, we have a timer at the middle and also three buttons. So we're going to create these uh, elements using HTML first, and then we're going to style them using CSS. And finally, we're going to add some functionalities to them using JavaScript. The first things we need to do is to create a folder and also we're going to open that folder inside the Visual Studio Code. So let me go to my desktop. I create a folder here in my desktop. I'm going to call this folder the name of our project, which is Pomodoro Timer. So once you create the folder, you can just right click and click on open with a code, which is going to open it with Visual Studio Code and the default folder for you is going to be Pomodoro Timer and you can just create your files here to use it for your website. So you're going to create the first file which is index.html. Let's close the welcome tab and here we can just now close this section to have more space. Then we can use an exclamation mark to create an HTML5 boilerplate so we just can click on the first auto suggestion, the one that is showing the exclamation mark. And now we have our HTML5 boilerplate, which includes the doctor doc type tag at the top of the code, which is telling the browser which version of HTML we are using. And as we are using HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. After that, we have the HTML tag. And inside here, we have the lang attribute which sets the language of the page for the browser, which is, uh, we are, as we are using English, we just set it to be EN, which is, stands for English. Then we have the head tag, which is inside this HTML tag. Then we have the metadata tags and also the title tag. The first metadata tag sets the trusted attribute and we set it to be UTF-8, which is recommended by HTML5. This uh, trusted attribute, the uh, nearly contains all the characters and symbols so the users won't have any problem seeing the characters and symbols of the website if you use UTF-8. Then we have the compatibility metadata tag which sets the Internet Explorer, tells the Internet Explorer to use the most recent rendering engine which is Edge. Then we have the viewport metadata tag which sets the width of the screen to devices width so the browser is going to adjust itself by the device's size. For example, if you're using mobile screen and looking at the website inside any browsers, you see that the width is smaller than when you are using, for example, a tablet or desktop computer. And here, initial scale is the initial zoom level of the browser, which is set to be 100% by setting it to be 1. And finally, we have the title tag, which sets the title of the page so we can just check that one by clicking on the live server extension here as you can see the go live if you have installed let's check the if you open the 
uh, extensions using Counter Shift X. You have to install this server, this one, live server. You can just search here live server, and here you can just find this live server and you can just install it. After installation, you can just uh, you just click on this button here to open the server and open this website inside the browser. So let's just click on the go live. This is going to open this one inside the, our default browser, which in my case is Chrome. So the title is document. Let's change the title to the name of the project, which is Pomodoro Timer. And then we can just Let's bring this one to the left side and the uh, browser on the right side so you can see the changes in real time. Let's decrease the size of the browser. So inside the body, we're going to start and add our containers, head tags, headers, heading tags, and buttons. For example, here I'm going to add a div with a class of container, which is going to cover all the website. And uh, for just creating a div with a class of container, you just have to write down dot container. And then here you can just add the h1 tag with the class of title. And here we just write down the name of the project, Pomodoro Timer. We see it here, let's increase the size. So as you can see, we have the, this title inside the website now. After the title, we're going to have a paragraph with the class of uh, timer and also with the ID of timer. So for the ID, we add hashtag. For the class, we add dot. So this is going to give us a class and ID. Class we usually use for styling and ID for targeting, targeting them using JavaScript later on. So here I'm just going to hard code now 25 minutes. After the paragraph, we're going to have our buttons. So I'm going to put all the buttons inside a, a button wrapper. So I'm going to create a div with a class of button wrapper. Inside this div, we're going to have three buttons. The first one has the ID of a start and it's just going to say a start. We can see it here. Let me zoom this a little bit. You can see it better. And then after that, we're going to have another button with the ID of a stop and which is going to say just a stop. And finally, we're going to have another button with the ID of reset. So now we have all the elements we need to create our website. In the next section, we're going to start styling this website using CSS and make it like the final version. We bring everything to the center. We create these buttons with different colors and also we make some uh, the text bigger. So see you in the next section for the CSS part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the HTML part of the project. In this section, we're going to style the project using CSS. So if you look at the final version here, you can see that we have uh, our container in the center. We have different colors with the buttons and also we have a bigger text in the center. So the first things we need to do is to create an, a CSS file inside our project. So let me open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here we can create a new file. We just call it a style.css. And uh, before styling and using the CSS file, we need to add a link to this file within the HTML code. So inside the index.html, we need to add a link at the inside the head tag. After the title tag, we just add a link. We just write down link and then we can click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. So this is going to create a relationship between the style sheet and this. Uh, HTML file and the destination address is style.css because both files are located at the same directory. Now we can start styling our project using CSS. The first things I want to do is to target this div with a class of container. So the, the div with a class of container, we can target that one. We just use dot container because it's a class. We just 
target it using dot and then uh, I want to change remove the margin we just say margin zero for the top and bottom and auto for the left and right so the auto is going to bring it to the center but because it doesn't have a, a width still we cannot see see the uh, margin auto so we're gonna set the maximum width to 400 pixels this is going to set the width and then in this case it's going to set the maximum width to 400 and bring it to the center and then uh, what I want to do is to we can bring the text inside this container to the center using text align center so this is going to bring everything to the center inside the container then uh, let's add some padding of 20 pixels which is going to add some space er inside the element inside the container around the elements and also we want to change the font family to Robo roboto and if this font is not available i want to use sans serif instead okay so the font is looking good after the container we're going to target this title the title was an h1 tag with the class of title so here i'm gonna add that class so let's change the font size to be 36 pixels so it, which uh, makes it bigger and then add some margin at the bottom of 10 pixels which is going to have some space between the title and the next things and then let's set the color of the title to be this color 2 c3 e50 which is kind of a uh, dark gray very dark gray so after that we're going to target this timer so the timer is a paragraph with a class of timer so we can target that one here using dot timer so let's change the font size to be 72 pixels so we have the zoom here let's remove the zoom so you can see the real sizes and then let's change the color of this the same as the color of the title now we have the buttons as you can see they are in the center and everything looks okay but we want to target the button because the button here we can target this tag using button so button okay so we have the button i want to change this button size and make it bigger so we change the font size to be 18 pixels we add some padding in the top and bottom of 10 pixels and 20 pixels for the left and right let's add some margin of 10 pixels so they have some space between them let's change the color of the text to be white so you cannot see it now but i want to change the color of these buttons to green red and gray so we're going to see it later clearly so let's for now we just add some background color so you can see it better i just choose the same background color black but i'm going to remove this background color later so let's uh, remove the border so we just say border none and then we set the border radius to be four pixels so this is going to make the buttons rounded so this is going to have some rounded corner and then let's add some let's make the cursor to be pointed so when we hover over the buttons we see a pointing hand okay the mouse cursor is going to change to po pointer and then uh, let's so i think that's it for the button let's target each uh, let's add some hover effect or let's uh, just target each button so the button each of them has an id of a start a stop and reset you can target that one using pound sign for example a start so to target the start button let's change the background color to be 27 ae 60 okay and then uh, let's also make this text to be uppercase so we just use text transform uppercase 
So make the text uppercase. And when, when we hover over them, over the buttons, we just say button hover suited class we use. So when we hover over them, I want to change the opacity to be 70%. So it becomes like this. So you know that something happened. And also we want to add some transition. As you can see, this is very fast. I want to add some transition to opacity and then just 0.3 seconds with ease and in and ease in and out effect. Now, as you can see, it's kind of more nice. And then let's target the other buttons. So we just say stop button, for example, the, let's change the background color to be C039B, which is kind of C0392 B, which is a red color. And then finally, we're going to target this reset button. We change the background color to be kind of gray color. So it's going to be 7F8C8D. Okay. And then now we can just remove this background color here. So let's remove the zoom level. So we have a style is like this. Okay. So that was it for the CSS part of the project. In the next section, we're going to work on the JavaScript part and we're going to add some functionality. As you can see from the final version, when we press on the start, as you can see, the timer is going to uh, count down from 25 minutes. And then, we go, and then when we reach to the zero, we're going to have some alert saying the time's up and then we can stop the timer and also we can reset the timer. So, See in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to add functionality to the project using JavaScript. So the first things we need to do is to create a JavaScript file inside our a folder that we have created. Let me open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here we can just create a new file and we call it, for example, index.js. And before using it, we need to add a link to this file within the HTML file. And the link file, the, if you remember for style.css, we have added in the head section, but for JavaScript, we have, we should add it at the end of the body section because we need all these elements to be loaded first in the browser and then we can add the functionality using JavaScript. So here we can just add a script tag. We just write down SC and we can click on the second auto suggestion they want with the SRC. And the SRC, which is the source address is index.js because both files are located at the same directory. Now we can use JavaScript in our projects. What we want to do first is to bring these elements, these three buttons, and also this timer, because we want to change the value of the timer. And also we want to add some event listener to these buttons. So uh, let's bring these elements inside the JavaScript. We just create a constant and we call it uh, a start element. And we set it to be equal to, because we want to target the browser, we just say document dot get element by ID because this is the, it has the ID of a start. So we just inside the parentheses, we just say start. Okay. So we can do the same things for the stop and reset button and also the timer. So I've just copied this one using alt shift arrow down three more times. The second one, I want to change this start to stop. I can just use control D to choose both of them. And then I just say stop. And then here, Use Ctrl D, make it reset. And this one is going to be timer. So we have access to this timer, a start, a stop and reset. Let's add the event listener to the three buttons. So we, we just add the start element. We add an event listener. The event listener we want to add is click because when we click on the button, we want to trigger a function. I'm going to call the function, uh, a start timer. Let's remove this. So start timer. I'm going to call the function a start timer, and then let's create the function at the top. So we create a function and we call it a start timer. 
And for now, we just console log as start. Okay, so now if you open the console using F12, let's clear the console and then let me decrease the size. So if I click on start, so before that, you have to refresh the page. If we click on a start, we see a start in the console. Okay, so let's do the same things for the other buttons, a stop and reset. So I'm going to copy this one using Alt Shift Arrow Done. And also, let's copy this function two more times. So this a start is going to be a stop. These two is going to be a stop. This one should be stop too. And this one should be reset. 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 This one too. Okay. So now if we check the console, if we click on start, we see start, a stop, and reset. As you can see, we are console logging these three terms based on the based on the button that we have we are uh, clicking. Now just we have created this. We want to start, start working on the a start timer function. So instead of console logging, we want to create an interval. So every one minute, every one second, we want to update a timer. Okay. So we want to create an interval. I'm going to call it interval. And then we have to just define it at the top by a variable called interval. And then we set this interval to a function called set interval, which is a built-in JavaScript function, which is going to trigger a function every, they're going to trigger this function every, for example, this is one millisecond, but we want to call this one every one second, which is thousand milliseconds. So every thousand milliseconds, we are going to tr trigger this function. So, for example, here, we're going to trigger the function. We just console log, for example, uh, we just console log something like a timer. And then let's clean the, now we just call this function. We, as you can see, every second we are calling this timer. You see the timer, six, seven, eight, nine. So this console log is getting uh, triggered every one second. But instead of doing that, we're going to update this timer. So let's create a variable at the top first, and we call this variable time left. So we just create a variable called time left. And for now, I just want to set it to be 1500 means uh, 25 minutes. Okay. This is based on seconds. So 1500 seconds is equal to 25 minutes. Now that we have created this one, so this is second, but we want to convert this one to minutes and seconds. So I'm going to create a function here. I'm going to call it update function, uh, update timer, for example. And this one is going to create the minutes, seconds from the time left. So we just say let's minutes, minutes. And this minutes is going to be equal to math.floor because we want to set it uh, set that one to be rounded to the lower so it returns a greatest integer less or equal to its numeric argument for example if you have 2.1 is going to be 2 okay or 2 point uh, so floor is going to do that so, on. so we want to just whatever time left is for example is whatever time time to, uh, left is we want to divide this one to 60 and this is going to be minutes and then the seconds is different the seconds is equal to time left. Whatever you divide to 60, the remainder is going to be seconds. So the first one is minute. Whatever the remainder is, is seconds. This is the remainder sign. It means time left divided by 60. Whatever the remainder would be this one. Okay. Now we have the minutes and seconds. We want to create it exactly like this time. But first, me, first uh, let me show it inside the timer. So we have the timer element. We want to change its inner HTML to equal to a uh, formatted time, which we are going to create here. The formatted time, let's create the formatted time. So the formatted time is equal to minutes plus this one, this sign, and then seconds. 
Okay. So let's seconds we are getting. Ah, right, we have to add a plus here too. Okay. So now we have this formatted time. Now we need to call this function to update timer here in that inside this function every one second. So here I'm gonna call this update timer. So if you now press on the start, this is going to update the timer to this one, but uh, we want to decrease the time every one second. So we want to decrease the time left. We just add double minus to each time decrease it one second. So if I now press a start, this is going to decrease uh, from top to bottom every one second. But uh, I just want to show you some problem we have here. For example, if we time, instead of just this 1500, we make it, for example, 120 second. If we start now, you can see it's a 158, 57, but I want to show 0, 1 instead of 1. So it's going to be formatted. So there is a method to, that we can use in JavaScript. It's called uh, pad start. But first we need to convert this one to a string. So we need to make a template here like this. Uh, the back tick here is uh, it's located over the tab key. This is this uh, this one allows us to have a variable inside here. So I'm gonna add a variable using dollar sign and a curly braces. So what we do first, we convert this one to a string because this is a number. And then after converting it to a string, we want to add some zero using pad start, which is going to add. I want to say just make it two digits, and then if this first digit is not existed, make it zero. Or even if, if it's not existed, we just make it zero. For example, if I start now, this one is zero one instead of one. Okay. So now let's do the same things for the seconds. So we're gonna have the. So let's remove this plus though because we are making a variable. We don't need to have that one. And then we we want to add another variable for seconds. First, we convert the seconds to a string by using to a string. And then we want to use a pad start. For two digits, we want to add zero. Okay, so let's start now. Uh, we have some extra things. Uh, we don't need this one as well. Let's start. Now, as you can see, 0, 1, 57. And then if this one decreases to, for example, if we have, for example, 6, 70 second, let's start this one. You can see 0, 0, 8, 0, 7, 0, 6. And then if this one finish, the minute is going to be double zero because we need two digits with zero. So this is the way you format your numbers using JavaScript. Okay, so now it's working. Uh, let, let's just bring this one. Uh, let's leave it there. Let's, I want to make it 10 seconds because I want to show you an alert. So each time this time finish, I want to uh, create an alert. So here, after the update timer, I just say if the time left is equal to zero, let's uh, make an alert saying time, time's up or time's up. Okay, now let's try it. So it starts from 10 seconds and when the 10 seconds finish, we want to see an alert saying time's up. You can see the alert, time's up. And if you press OK, you see the time is still going. And uh, as you can see, it's going backward. So we need to clear the interval as well. So we need to clear interval. And which interval we want to clear is this interval that we have. OK, now let's try it again. So after 10 seconds, it's going, this is going to create an alert. And then set the time to 0 so we can uh, so we clear this one and then if you start again, okay, it's going to backward again. So uh, we need to set the time again after the alert is, we set the alert to okay. Okay, so we can here, we just uh, set the time left. We set it to be again to, for example, 1500. So let's try again. Now we have 10 seconds when it's finished. 
this is going to clear after the okay clear the interval and if you start again it's going to start from 25 but uh, let's uh, work on the stop and the reset button so when we click on a stop timer we want to uh, clear the interval too so we just say clear interval and then we're gonna clear the interval so when we start when we press stop is going to, it is going to stop the timer at seven and if you start again this is going to continue so this is for the stop timer for the reset timer we want to clear it and also we want to set the time left to the 1500 which is 25 minutes and also we want to update timer and also we can call the update timer here after the time left as well so now if we press on the start it starts from 10 seconds we can stop it we can reset as you can see it goes to the 25 here we can start it again now let's uh, set the time left to 1500 so this is 225 let's increase the size so now if you press start it's going to start from 25 to 0 and when we reach the 0 we get an uh, alert we can stop it and start again and also we can reset the timer all right so that was it for creating this pomodoro timer using html css and javascript we also have learned how to bring the data the elements inside the javascript how to create an interval and update the timer based on the minutes and seconds and how to format them uh, using pad start at the zero if the timer is uh, less than nine or even it's zero and finally, we have learned how to clear the interval using a stop and the reset timer. So that was it for the projects. I hope you learned many things. See you in the next project.